I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Superman Special Issue Number One before Peter Tomasi closes the book on this era in Superman's life. Him and his son will need to deal with some old business. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. Alrighty then. So you may recall quite a few arcs back now. Clark and John had traveled to the mysterious Dinosaur Island, a mysterious place where all the flora and and Fauna has gone completely Jurassic Park. It's also there they met Captain Storm, a member of the DC World War II team, The Losers. You may remember in 2010 they did a movie version of Andy Diggle's updated version of the concept for Vertigo, or maybe you don't because the movie was super forgettable. Captain Storm had held off the dinosaur horde so Superman and his son could escape. John can't sleep one night and decides that he can't let this eat at his conscience anymore, so him and his dad Superman decide to break on through to the other side to rescue the captain. Granted, getting back to Dinosaur Island is kinda difficult, they only made it there the first time because Manchester Black was screwing with them and trying to trap them on the island forever. The Man and Boy of Steel managed to show up on the island just in time to save Captain Storm from getting eaten by a bunch of dinosaurs. They do this by quantum leaping right into a T-Rex's guts. Oh sure, it's gross and everything, but I bet it's still not as gross as coconut water. That stuff's just plain disgusting. Now, in the previous story, Captain Storm wasn't ready to leave Dinosaur Dinosaur Island, it's where all of his friends on the Losers died and where they're all currently buried. He has now changed his tone due to the fact that the island has actually gotten worse. Some of the creatures have been eating the dead bodies of World War II soldiers that have landed there and it's causing them to mutate into some sort of horrible dinosaur-human hybrid. Did, did I also mention the creatures are zombies too? Because if they bite you, you'll end up growing your own sick lizard limbs, which you know is pretty good for Captain Storm because he's missing an eye and a leg. He can't leave without his old team's dog tag, so Superman and Superboy have to do a whole escort mission to take him back to the cave so he can make off with his keepsakes. When they return to our dimension, though, Superman and Superboy go out of their way to help Captain Storm get set up. They get Cyborg's dad to give him a brand new robot leg. He officially gets debriefed for all the work he did during World War II. He even picks up his military pension, which, man, with added interest has really got to have added up by now. He more or less vows to do the Steve Rogers thing right now, travel the highways and byways of America, dropping off the dog tags to the descendants of his old war buddy so their families can have some peace of mind. It's pretty sweet. It's a real shame modern day war comics don't carry the same cachet as the World War II ones do, because if they did, I feel this would be a pretty nice way to kick off a modern day losers type book. John the Superboy feels good about himself, having wrapped up all the loose ends, as does Superman, helping out a fighting man, you know, a real American hero, if you will. And hey, just to really hit home the idea that this is Peter J. Tomasi's final word on Superman before Brian Michael Bendis comes and takes over, Superman literally closes the bedroom door on the audience as it all ends. And that was Superman special number one, everybody. There's also a couple backup stories that seemed fun, but this video was already getting long enough. Plus, given what I've already seen about Brian Brian Michael Bendis' work on Superman, I'm sure none of the backup stories will ever be referenced ever again moving into the future. Overall, I felt this story was another nice, fun little goodbye for the Gleason and Tomasi era on Superman. It didn't really blow my socks off, but it didn't really have to either. It was just nice to take one last ride with this status quo before everything changes again. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this issue a 7.5 out of 10, so that's Superman special, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other videos I've been working on, then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cave Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you love the Comic Multiverse podcast, we're having our 100th episode spectacular on Twitch on Sunday at 9 Eastern Standard Time. Come out, say hello, join in the festivities, and if you have any fan questions or fan art you want to send my way, do so on Twitter with the hashtag TCM100. It would be much appreciated. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cave Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye.